just sit down and you finally go, you know, like let the air out and the phone rings and it's, uh, it's one of the brothers, one of the young dudes in the fellowship and he, he's telling me, he's like, man, you got a minute? You got time? I'm like, yeah, what's up? I'm thinking he's going to have like some deep, super, you know, something traumatic to talk to me about. He's like, man, I've been talking to one of my old friends and he's an atheist and, uh, you know, he said, I got caught up in his logic and I got ripped and I was like. What does ripped mean? After he told me he got ripped, he put the atheist on the phone. So you can get ripped? Yeah. And ripped is like, you know, okay, getting the ball stolen in basketball, so I'm supposed to get my faith taken away from me by this atheist and his logic, because his logic mm. ripped Terrell. Mm. But so, tell him what happened. All right, man, so here's what happens. He, the first thing he starts off with is, man, religion is basically busted, whacked up. <laughs> no, no. Religion is busted and jacked up because people have been using it throughout all of history to do violent acts. Mm. And so he's like, dude, like, I don't want anything to do with Christianity because, you know, people are using it in all these kind of different, all these kind of different ways in the name, like, they're, they are, the, the people who are supposed to be religious are doing these things. And I was like, you know what, man, people were doing yo, these yo, things. Yo, tell him what you said. I feel you. Here's what I told him what I said. I told him, I'll tell you what I told him. Tell him, just like, I, <laughs> well, man, what I told him is this, that people have been using, it's not about the religion, because I said, let's take Hitler, for instance. Darwin writes his book on the origin of species by means of natural selection. And I said, well, man, let's finish off the title of his book. Anybody who wants to go see it, get an original copy, open up the front cover. It's going to say on the origin of species by means of natural selection. Yeah. Or preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. Oh boy, killing it. Preservation killing it. of favored, well, who are the favored races? Who so are the said, favored races? Hitler already had it in him to do some dastardly, detrimental, devastating type things. Like, he wanted to hurt some people, right? If they weren't Aryans, right? Yo, that was some beast stuff. Man. All right, but all... these. <laughs> Y'all hear that? That's the assistant pastor at the movement, man. That's what we going with here. Tell him, go ahead. Man, all right, but the, the whole point was that Hitler was already predisposed to want to do this to some people, but all of a sudden now he gets this book and he gets quote-unquote scientific backing to do this thing. Now, it doesn't make evolution right or wrong, it makes Hitler evil, even though there's no scientific evidence to support this thing. So I'm like, in the same way, you can't critique Christianity on the wickedness of the people who used it for personal gain. Mm. You can't use that as the measuring rod for whether Christianity is true or not. Right. I said, but we can look and see if it is true, because was Christ lying in the things that he spoke or in who he said he was? Mm. You have somebody here who's committing, who's, who's, who's doing miracles, right? right? Raising people from the dead, giving up uh, sight to the blind, right. rebuking the winds and the waves, walking on water, and the Jews who hated the Christians and would not believe in quote unquote, well, I'll say this, that he was the Messiah, right? So they're antagonistic mm. to people who believe in Christ. Even in their own Babylonian Talmud said that he's basically a sorcerer who practices black magic. Mm. So what does all that mean? That means that they're not going to deny that he did miracles. They're just going to say he did them through the devil, mm. right? Now, why would a demon cast out a demon? That makes absolutely no sense. Why? 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 They couldn't deny it, son. Exactly. Couldn't what up, Gunny? Word life, son. Couldn't deny it at all. That's right. So, we're going to keep moving on. Almost lost my train of thought with that. Come on, man. Oh, so here's what I said to him after that. Is that no external writings from anybody during the life of Christ or shortly after said he didn't do the miracles. If they did, because they couldn't deny it. That wasn't, whether or not Christ did miracles was not a question in history. Not a question. Cool. So then he goes on to say, well, man, there's so many different world religions, and there's hundreds of them. How do we know which one's right? So I'm like, look, man, check this out. There's something in logic called the law of non-contradiction. It means that two truth statements cannot be, uh, okay, two statements, two statements of truth cannot be, be true in the same way and in the same sense. So I told him this, you have a man and a woman walk up to you. She looks pregnant. You say, oh, you look pregnant. She says, no, I'm not. Her husband says, yes, she is. Can both of those people be true at the exact same time? Nah, man, heck no. <laughs>
They can't be true. And so, in the same way, the Quran, Surah 4157, go check it out. Surah 4157, in the Quran, says that Christ was not crucified. But I already established with this young man that Cornelius Tacitus, mm. a great Roman historian, he's hailed as a great Roman historian by non-Christians, by secular people who hate Christians, people who have nothing to do mm. with Christianity, say that he is one of the best historians of ancient Rome. Mm. He wrote over the span of, of, of many decades and different lives of emperors, and he said in his book, The Annals, that Jesus Christ suffered the extreme penalty, Christus, the founder of the name, he says, suffered the extreme penalty under Pontius Pilate. Right? The extreme penalty means crucifixion. That's just mm. the old school way of saying crucifixion. So if the Quran says that Christ was not crucified in Surah 4, 157, but history written by non-Christians mm. says that Christ was crucified, mm. can the Quran really be a book that came from Allah mm. divinely through the angel Gabriel mm. to the prophet Muhammad? They mm. believe that the Quran is 100% divinely inspired. But if that's the case, how can it get history wrong? How could it get history wrong? How can it get history wrong that people who hate Christianity would advocate and say that this actually happened, but the Quran says that it didn't, but Allah said that it didn't. Ah. But the Bible says that Christ was crucified right. in line with history. So the law of non-contradiction, those two true truth statements, yeah. she can't be pregnant and not pregnant That's at right. the same time. And he can't be crucified and not crucified at the same time. The Quran is wrong and the Bible is right. That's and right. it goes like that for all the other religions. So what is the standard? What's the litmus test to show that we have the correct religion? I said, you can take all of the holy books in the world. There's at least oh, 27 right. holy books. The Mahabharata, the Buddhist scriptures, the Mormon scriptures, the Jehovah Witness Bible, all these different scripture, Bible, religious, holy texts, and you can put them through a test. You can take them through, you can take them through uh, the Olympics, so to speak. And here's how you test them. You look to see if they have any predicted prophecy at all. Specific predicted prophecy. And I told them the Bible, prophecy after prophecy after prophecy, is the only religious and holy book that can predict the, the future with 100% accuracy. Mm. It'll say something like the city of Tyre. It'll be laid flat like a stone and nobody will ever live there again and the goats will run by here and mm. vultures. And you can go to these places to this day. There'll be goats running around vultures circling over and it'll be laid flat and nobody mm. will ever live there again. And you can go there to this day and those mm. places are supported like that by the scripture. Mm. And you can go look them up there's hundreds of specific prophecies in the Bible, and they've all come to pass. Mm. And then we move to scientific evidence. Oh, but no other book, the Quran, none of these other books have specific predicted prophecies. Nada. Because the God, so to speak, behind those books isn't all-knowing, so he doesn't know the future. Or the past. I feel you. So, scientific facts. Job 26.7 7, written in 2000 B.C., says that God suspended the earth over nothing. No satellite, no long-range measuring device, not a mucho, not a mucho, right? Right? Scientific evidence. Um, what else was there? Oh, other religions, Hindus, believe that at that time in 2000 BC, that the earth was on back of an elephant that was on the back of a tortoise that was paddling through the sea. Oh, man. The Greeks believe that Atlas, you know, you've seen the picture of this cat bent over with a world on his shoulder. That's who they thought was holding up the earth. Hmm. The Bible, flawless in its scientific evidence that predates actual man's discoveries. Isaiah 40:20, that, uh, that, that God sits enthroned upon the circle of the earth. That means sphere. It gets deeper than that, that there's fountains in the bottom of the ocean. And it's not until like the 1970s that they actually have a submarine that's pressurized enough to be able to go down to the bottom of the ocean and see that there's all kinds of springs and water and stuff all coming. All kinds of springs all and water. All kinds of springs and water. That shows the fingerprint of God because he knows what's going on in the earth before man's measuring devices can even catch up with the Bible. Man's measuring devices have had to catch up with the Bible. And at this point, this young man is pretty convinced. He's just sitting there like, ooh, ha, ha. Whoa, like I didn't even know all that. But I told him the Bible, its whole goal and intent and the reason why it was written Tell wasn't him. to have all that perfect Tell predicted uh, prophecy. It wasn't written to have all that perfect scientific facts. Yeah. It was written to declare the moral state of mankind mm. and let them know the cure that they need that no other religion offers. What's that? So we got a chance to talk about, well, brother, how many lies have you told? Mm. He said, I think I've told a million, <laughs> million lies, right? I said, man, how many things have you stole? He said, man, I've stole a lot of stuff. 
I said, man, have you ever thought lustful thoughts or undressed a woman with your eyes and thought like pornographic type thoughts in your mind? He said, yeah, I do that all the time. I'm hardwired to do that. Mm. I said, well, you know what's deep is that if you were in your room sitting by yourself and all those thoughts were going on in your head and that girl that you were thinking about walked in naked, wouldn't you do the stuff that you had going on in your head? Mm. He said, yeah. I said, that's why God judges us just on our thoughts as though we actually did the physical Ooh. thought. Because if we had the opportunity to do it, we would. And Christ says that in Matthew chapter 5, 28 and 29, and that area right there. He says, when you look at a woman lustfully, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart. Mm. And I said, you know how we know we've done wrong? Because our conscience tugs on us and our guilt signifies that we've broken a standard. But if I tell a lie, right, and there's nobody around at all, right, no cop, no video camera in the corner, but I'm feeling guilty, mm. how am I, therefore, the judge of what's right and wrong? Because at that time, I should just lie and be like, man, I don't really care anyway. I just lied. Who gives a hoot? But I'm feeling guilty, which shows I'm a moral creature created by a moral God, and I'm being held to a standard, and when I rebelled against that standard, I'm feeling like, oh, man, something's wrong, right? Mm. But if I was my own standard, I wouldn't care, and I could just be able to kick that guilt off. Mm. So, since you've lied, oh man, I thought that was you touching me on my arm. Since you've lied, since you've stole something, since you've looked with lust, mm. you're guilty, mm. and you know it, mm. right? What are you going to do? This same God who destroyed the world with the flood, and there's, you know, there's scientific evidence that Alps, Himalayas, and Mount Everest ha all have like fossilized seashells and mm. clams at the top of them, which is evidence that they were all underwater at a certain point. And why were they underwater? And why the clams are like in these positions that show that it happened suddenly. But well, why were they under the water? They, they were under the water they because the, the whole world was being judged for the guilt of their sins. Mm. And I was letting this young man well, know. What to, tell him to, tell him what it was though. What, what, how sin, did he judge? Uh, what do you mean? How did he judge? Well, sin equals death. No, like the you know what what had the you know the fossilized stuff going. Oh, the homosexuality, no, no, fornication. What are you talking about? The, the water, like what 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 major. The flood. The flood, yeah. A universal flood hit the earth because God was upset with man because of their sins. That's the Noah flood. That's Noah's flood. Y'all didn't know that Christians can come this nice. I, I I know you're sitting there like, man, this cat's a Christian. Like, we can be that nice. Y'all can be that nice. This is the assistant pastor here. I know y'all don't see him very much. And this is the man behind the evangelism coordination at our church. The historicity, everything historicity, this man in charge. So I'm telling y'all can come down to the movement and get educated, man. Get equipped. I'm telling you, yeah, it's... Man, nice, wasn't he? He was nice. You, you know, even at a Christian watching this, you got to give it up. If you're atheist, atheist Bill, atheist Frank, you know, you know. I know probably y'all could be hating black folks and stuff because some of y'all leave some racist comments. But even though if you hate colored people and you hate Christian, you got to know my man was nice on that. <laughs> Go ahead, man. All right. So the whole point was is that I was letting him know that since he's committed these sins, he's held liable before God, and God's not bringing another flood. In fact, instead of bringing a flood, God sent his son and had him crushed and crucified on that cross, just like Cornelius Tac Tacitus, a secular historian, testified to. And I also told him that Christ had risen over the dead and gave him a whole bunch of supporting evidence for that. But the question was for him, what is he going to do when he dies? Because mm. Sid Siddhartha Gautama... The Buddha is dead. Prophet Muhammad is dead. Mm. But Christ is the only one who was crucified and rose over death. Because I told him that Jesus Christ was buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, who was on the very ruling council that had Christ crucified. So if they wanted to go find Jesus' body, it was in a rich man's tomb, and they knew where to find it. But they didn't, and they couldn't. And it was a big 2,000-pound stone rolled into a groove, placed to seal it up. And so there's no way he could have gotten out. And the same disciples who ran away like some little girls when Christ was, mm. was arrested, why would they now come back and fight, you know what I'm saying, uh, the Roman soldiers who are like the ultimate gladiator UFC fighting heroes of the time back in the day. Mm. Now they have the courage to come fight them. Mm. And these are some cats that would commit suicide rather than lose a battle. And so there's no evidence for his body. He's risen. He's seated on high. And I asked him, basically, what are you going to do now? And that was it. I know you didn't know. I didn't know. I know you didn't know it could be like this, huh? The man was ready to give a defense and an answer to the faith, even talking to an atheist. You Somebody called you him with an was you on the phone because they time. knew he. I'm telling y'all, y'all can be nice like this too. And guess what? I didn't get ripped.